welcome back to the Minute Women podcast. My name is Grace. And I'm Linnea. And, and we are here we're together. We're studio. Oh, I'm so excited. It's so exciting. I forgot how much I loved hearing my own voice because <laughs> in the studio with the headphones, you get like feedback. It just makes me sound wonderful and great. Yeah, I think 2021 should be a year of positive narcissism. Yeah. Like Trump has really made narcissism oh, toxic and vile. And oh. obviously a lot of shit has gone on this past week. But I think now God. we need to like hone back in some positive narcissism. Like, yes. I love the sound of my own voice when yes. it comes through these headphones. I do. I just really do. And your voice. Just it's just great. I love it. But yeah, America 2021 has been rough already. I saw something that was like six days without incident oh. and then just like <laughs> tearing it down. Zero days without incident. I also saw one that was like well played December 30, like it was like December 37th, 2020. It was like they discontinued <laughs> with 2020. Nice try. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's how it feels. I, and we've talked about um, my best friend Kaya and she's just, in Pittsburgh, I FaceTimed her the day of the coup, and she was the like, coup. "Just living through a coup in a global <laughs> pandemic." Oh, you know, just She's insurrection. Like, I'm never going to work in an office again. She's like, "I'm just going to always be home forever." <laughs> yep, it's like um, I just can't go outside anymore, <laughs> yeah, which like, is fine. I think I'll get over it. She's like, you know, it wouldn't even shock me if I woke up and there were just like bombs. It, she's like, that just well, wouldn't. Yeah. It's, it's just like it wouldn't. Yeah, like it that just wouldn't even be super shocking. It would be like, oh, yeah. natural, that's the natural progression of how things are going. <laughs> In the wise words of my father, the world has been ending for a long time. Yeah. That's the only the only <laughs> thing you can think. It's just like, well, it's not gonna end today. <laughs> oh, but anyway, as we always like to say when we talk about America, is that Canada's not perfect either. So. It's true. It's true. We're not. We're not great either. <laughs> However, but. people aren't trying to. Not even trying. People are just wow, wow. Yeah. Like I think I think our right wing people are less organized than the United States. Was. Yeah. Even though they look kind of idiotic on the surface, they're very well organized and like to to plan something. Even an unsuccessful yeah. coup. That takes a lot of like planning and it shit. Does. Like you it just does. like I think at least it's a wake up call of like, oh, you should take these people way more seriously yeah. than you've been taking them for the last whatever. Did you see of years. Trudeau's statement? I didn't. It was basically just like it's okay. There's going to be a new president soon. And hopefully <laughs> that'll make things better. <laughs> Buckle in, folks. For yeah. Four years of another old man in all this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Also, every statement Trudeau does, he talks about, you know, president elect, like President Joe Biden mm-hmm. and vice president elect Kamala Harris. Like, she's That's like, nice. like, she's going to fix everything. Like, it's fine. Like, it's fine yeah. that it's Biden. Like, she's there. So, like, that's okay. Yeah. And I'll be honest. I mean, neither of them were my first pick for obviously we don't get votes but like (laughs) they wouldn't have been my first pick for the democratic representative yeah but the fact that we will have our we will live through the first female vice presidency in the united states yeah is pretty cool i think that's i think that's super cool i was also looking just out of curiosity at the list of like recently elected senators Mm -hmm. and there's quite a lot of diversity in that group as well which is really exciting well yeah because i know the same day there was like really exciting stuff happening in In georgia Georgia. and like it was like oh this is so great and then like oh this is really terrible yeah so basically in georgia from what i know they elected uh he's african-american the senator that they elected yeah And, and a pastor and a pastor. Yeah, he was like the first African American senator in Georgia, maybe ever, but I yeah. think he was the first in a long time at least. Yeah, so so there is good stuff happening in America. Yeah. You know. <laughs> bright spots. And I didn't mean for this week's episode to be uh sort of oh thematically similar to right, what was going on. Because this is about the riots. We're talking about the Richard riots. Yeah. Which much dumber riots. Like okay. this is the kind of violence that you can be like, that's silly. Yeah. Isn't that ridiculous? I mean yeah. Quebec takes it very seriously. But People, you know, it's not the collapse of a government. Yeah, that's key. Which is key. Yeah. That's good. That's what happens in Canada. Hockey, <laughs> hockey violence is at least contained. And, yeah. You know. Also, did I see and we might have to look to producer Mark for some information on this. Did they like rename the NHL Mark? Yeah. So they've sponsored. So divisions. they have names now and it's um 
I'm actually going to look it up because it sounded really stupid. Like, I thought it was a joke. Like, it sounded really unreal. That's how you know that the NHL is the most economically faulty of the major right? sports leagues. They're branding the um, divisions. Yes. Ugh. So, uh, two days ago, NHL announced division names. And they are Atlantic, Metropolitan, Central, and Pacific. And then the sponsors are the West Division, Honda, North Division, (laughs) Scotia, (laughs) Central Division, Discover, and East Division is Mass Manual. So it'll be called like uh, Honda Division West and Scotia Division North and Discover Division Central and Mass Mutual Division East. One of those is significantly worse than the others. Honda's not great, but Mass Mutual, Mutual yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Is definitely the worst. Colonial Honda taking over, right? Yeah, <laughs> they're really living up to their their dealership name. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, back to the riot. Back to yeah, Maurice Richard. Uh, so last week we did. Tell me, someone lights a car on fire. Uh, you'll just have to wait because that's see. my favorite rioting event. <laughs> It's so pointless. It's so stupid. Lighting a car on fire? Yes. It's like <laughs> rioters like to do that. I don't know why. Flip a car is definitely. It's, gr- mm. it's great because it, it takes so much energy to flip a car. Yeah. Of getting strangers united. It's like, let's flip this. No, so flip a car. Five minutes. Five minutes. You meet me back here. We're going to flip this car. Okay, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> So last week we did the kind of the career and life of Maurice Richard, but we yeah, did we not did. talk about the turning point in his career, kind of. Okay. In the sense that it was really the catalyst for the five consecutive cup dynasty that happened at the last five years of his career. Okay. So these are called the the Richard riots. Okay. So brief recap. Maurice Richard, star player of the Montreal Canadiens hockey team throughout the 1940s and 50s. By 1954, Richard is a perennial all-star and is a two-time Stanley Cup winner. A perennial all-star, like a flower. (laughs) Like a perennial. (laughs) (laughs) He is a beautiful flower. You've blossomed into a really beautiful young hockey player. (laughs) Love that. (laughs) And he held the league record for all-time leading goal scorer. He also had a slight reputation of having a slightly short temper. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So throughout his career, Richard was fined and suspended several times for retaliation assaults on players and officials, including a $250 fine for slapping a linesman in the face less than three months before March 13th, 1955, which is like... The day okay. that we're going to talk about. So he slapped a linesman. So he's already slapped a But imagine a ref that in the linesman. Face. That linesman's probably like, dude, the <laughs> rocket slapped me. <laughs> I'm sure for them, they're like, it starts with a slap. Where does it end? Yeah. <laughs> Where do my rights begin? <laughs> Just constantly afraid for their lives. <laughs> So it was really common for opposing players to purposefully provoke him during games by hooking, slashing, and holding on to him as much as possible. Because he's like a little boy. He gets picked on, and then he gets angry. Absolutely. It's partly, I think, to prevent him from scoring, but it's also the best way to get him out of the game is to get him to take himself out of the game by doing something stupid. Right. The, he was also usually yelled at uh, using French Canadian slurs. Aww. So it was really common for Anglophone players to yell some sort of French Canadian slurs at them. <laughs> okay. You know, they're really a, 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 an attacked people yeah. <laughs> during this like, era of the league. Richard had become a cultural icon for French Canadians as well during this time. Him so, and Le Bull Duck, I'm telling you. I he, like there's no way he didn't listen to her music. Oh yeah, they they totally did. Yeah. Had to have. I hope they met. She she died in the forties. Yeah. So maybe in his like early career they yeah. hung out a little he bit. He totally grew up listening to her music though. Yeah. Like as a kid, like those what was it, eight kids? There were seven kids. Seven I kids. Think. Or maybe eight kids. I don't know. But maybe, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, his kids and his dad, like in the Depression and stuff, they totally were like blasting that. Bopping to the bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just bopping. Bopping. <laughs> the Richard's aggression towards other players, especially Anglophone players, was revered by Quebecers, and they saw it as him defending 
second class French Canadian citizens. Okay. So to and that's them, offensive. Well, to Quebecers, they love that he oh, yeah. will like retaliate against Anglophone players, yeah. but they also see Anglophone players as being very culturally insensitive towards French players. Okay. Which, you know, I think there is some justification behind that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Chin flick. Chin yeah. Flick. Chin flicks. <laughs> How to insult someone who is Quebecois. Insult the church, their mom, yeah. or flick your chin. <laughs> <laughs> the Cultural Association prompted Benoit Melanson to compare him to Jackie Robinson in oh. his book, The Rocket, A Cultural History of Maurice Richard. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and he says that both players represented the possibility for their respective minorities to make it in some way. And both were beloved by the people of Montreal. Both beloved by the people of Montreal, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and for French Canadians, they see it as their way out Yeah, in a lot of respects. Because oh, for sure. During the 1950s, even though the Quebec economy... Well, even though Quebec society is French, the economy is predominantly English. Right. So English and American, English Canadian and American companies had purchased the vast majority of Quebec's natural resources. So okay. any of the industry jobs are owned by English people, not French people. Right. So to move up in those companies, you have to be English speaking. Yeah. It's only the bottom rung jobs that are actually going to be French language, Ooh. which creates this weird class division of language in yeah. Quebec. And it leads to a lot of the political upheavals that take place in the 60s and 70s that result in Canada becoming a bilingual country. Yeah. Um, so, because at this point, Canada is not officially a bilingual country. Correct. We are not officially a yeah. bilingual country until uh, Pierre the Trudeau. 60s. So, yeah. yeah, late 60s. What a guy. Yeah. He's <laughs> dead. He is, he is dead, for sure. That's the funeral we were thinking of. <laughs> He died. Sorry to Jean Chrétien, yeah. who is very much alive. Uh, I don't even remember what episode that's in. The uh, Great Flag Debate, I think. Uh, maybe. <laughs> For some reason, I feel like it's the Oregon episode, but I don't maybe. know. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, he's No, alive. it was the flag one because um, <laughs> the first time a certain flag was flown, it was when uh, Chrétien oh. got... Ch- oh, he ch- Chrétien choked out somebody. Oh, right. <laughs> crazy see Canadian (laughs) politics are violent too Uh. (laughs) that was very frowned upon we'll just say yes very frowned upon (laughs) nobody thought that was cool (laughs) I mean it's funny now yeah and he's still alive (laughs) and and Christian is still alive Pierre Trudeau dead yeah (laughs) everybody we're talking about is dead yeah oh but I was actually thinking that I think the rocket was alive to see his heritage minute because I'm pretty sure this one came out in 97. Oh, that's cool. So he he is on the short list of people who are alive to see their heritage minute. That's very cool. Yeah, especially because his is so much about him. It's not even events that he was Because it was part the of. movie. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's cool. Which I said in the previous episode that The Rocket was good looking. And I will say that that is mostly based off of the person who plays He's him in, in the, the movie. movie. <laughs> He's not... He's just a little He's scary. I get, looking, I get why they're all like the eyes, the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if the man can blink. His eyes are so wide. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was taught how to blink. <laughs> like, that's just the French way. Don't blink. <laughs> he manually wets his eyes instead of blinking. That's, that's what, why uh, listening. what was his wife's name? Lucille. Luce, that's what Lucille is for. She's <laughs> like, oh my god, shut your goddamn eyes. <laughs> He sleeps, <laughs> eyes open. <laughs> like, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, shut those things. <laughs> Please, stop. <laughs> Anyways, back to economic disparity. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, <laughs> so all of this class division produces discontent in Quebec, and it's this... It's boiling under the surface leading up to the riots. Not to say that the riots are the solution to that. Right. But there's this undercurrent of politics that is taking place around this time. Okay. In early 1954, Richard's teammate, Bernie Boom Boom (laughs) Geoffrey, 
<laughs> was suspended in a move seen as anti-Francophone. Oh. Following the suspension, Richard, who had a weekly column in the Samedi Dimanche newspaper. Wait, col- wait, wait. Richard has a column? Yeah, he writes for the newspaper. Shut <laughs> up. But I don't know what he'd write about. I guess about hockey. <laughs> But hockey, imagine, his his day to day, like I'm just imagining like a diary, like so, like hockey player interviews are definitely the most boring interviews, especially the ones yeah. where they catch them between periods. They're like, "What should oh, you yeah. do different?" He's like, "Oh, we should shoot, shoot more more pucks yeah. on net, more pucks on net." Yeah, imagine a column in the newspaper because they don't have those more pucks on net, more <laughs> pucks on net, <laughs> just more pucks on net. We need to play more D. We need to play a better game. Yeah. We need to be faster. They're playing better than us. And then, yeah, 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 to every, like, question. Yeah. Like, if it was, like, if, like, people wrote in questions for it, he'd just be, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be the most boring <laughs> column ever. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's true. I have to get my, I'll have to try and get my hands on a, uh, one of his articles. That's so funny that he wrote a column. That makes me <laughs> like him too, even, even more. A, yeah. Not even like, a, I'm picturing one a article. column that's probably, like, Probably at least a thousand words. Also, this boy didn't finish school. He yeah. dropped out when he was like 16. What you writing about, <laughs> Richard? What are you writing about? I don't know. Today, I went to the grocery <laughs> store. Yeah. And then I went to play <laughs> hockey. <laughs> and then... I got kicked out of the hockey game because I got, I got mad. I had to pay a fine. <laughs> Lucille is unhappy with me. I could not go to war. <laughs> I'm very sad. I sleep outside tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, after after Boom Boom is kicked out of a game, he's suspended. He writes his in his column, and he calls President Campbell a dictator in, <laughs> in print. I really thought you were going to say a dick. And well, I was like... <laughs> maybe that's what he you meant You go, right. Richard. <laughs> The league, in turn, forced Richard to retract his statement oh. and discontinue his column. Oh, snap. So they're like, no more writing for the They're newspaper. like, whoa, 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 he does have a brain. <laughs> he can think. The boy can write. <laughs> He's not illiterate. Quick, <laughs> cancel the column. Cancel the column, quick. Uh-oh. In his uh, 1976 biography of Richard, Jean-Marie Pellerin wrote that his humiliation was shared by all Francophone Quebecers who were sent running once more by the English boot. Ooh. Ooh. There's also this really great political cartoon after that of it's Richard as a student in school writing lines in... The, on a chalkboard yeah and in french it says i will not call president campbell a dictator i will not call president campbell a dictator but then also the cartoon of him is like him spanking himself as well <laughs> like he's like smacking himself on the butt which i guess is to be like gesturing to the to the president who's in the like kiss my bum yeah like, but no one would do that anymore <laughs> it's just weird it's weird. Political French cartoons weird. and political cartoons are weird. Yeah. Political <laughs> cartoons during World War II were uh, extreme. Racist. So <laughs> racist. <laughs> Literally, Russia is just always a bear. <laughs> <laughs> and America is usually a baby. Well, it's accurate. <laughs> a bear. <laughs> just on a tricycle. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> so... To also fully understand what takes place on March 13th, 1955, okay. we also have to understand the Montreal Canadiens' rivalry with the Boston Bruins. So we okay. talked about this a little bit last yeah. week. It's probably the biggest rivalry in NHL. Yeah. Definitely one of the oldest. Yeah. It's the, the two teams have actually played each other both in regular season play and Stanley Cup playoffs combined, more than any two teams have played each other. So they play all the time, which is just because of divisions and stuff, but also because they're both very successful and they go to the playoffs a lot. Yeah. Yeah, and they just fucking hate each other. Yeah. (laughs) So the first ever professional ice hockey team in the United States to play in the national hockey team was the Boston Bruins. That's the Mm -hmm. first American team to play. Also, they're relatively close geographically. Yeah, they're, they're close to the border. So, yeah, yeah, it makes sense that they would play each other a lot. Yeah. 
And during this period of time, there are two Montreal teams. So you have the Montreal Maroons and the Montreal oh, Canadiens. Oh, right, the Maroons. And the Maroons are the, they're both expansion teams, the Maroons and the Bruins, and their first games are against each other. Okay. So Boston's first game in NHL is against Montre- a Montreal team. Wow. So Boston and Montreal Canadiens don't necessarily have a notable rivalry during this time. Actually, the... Canadians' main rival were the Maroons, and the Canadians' owner had actually worked behind the scenes to admit the Maroons with the expectation that they would be the team's most lucrative rival. Makes sense. You've got two Montreal-based teams. Exactly. You would think that people would pick one or the other. Yeah, so why, yeah, Boston, there's really no reason that Boston would be their rival at this point. Right. After their second season, three more U.S. teams were added, and the Bruins were placed in the newly formed American division while the Canadians entered the Canadian division. The Boston-Montreal rivalry only truly began after the owners of the financially troubled Maroons, who had subsequently acquired the Canadians, decided to contract their original franchise. The Maroons' 1938 demise left the Canadians without a crosstown rival and left the league with only seven teams, thus compelling it to realign into a single division. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So the Rocket had many run-ins with the Bruins. Um, infamously, on April 8, 1952, the previous two seasons ago, I guess, Richard scored one of the most famous goals of all time, described variously as the greatest in history of the game or the most beautiful in the history of the world. I know what one it is. Yeah, you posted a picture of it. It's so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> as blood dripped down his face yeah. after an early injury that gave him a concussion, <laughs> he scored the series-winning goal of the 1952 Stanley Cup Finals. Richard had left the game but returned to to the bench in the third period wearing a bandage. Richard, although somewhat dazed, jumped off the bench and drove... Dazed. The, dazed concussed. Concussed. Uh, <laughs> drove to the net to score past uh, a surprised Sugar Jim Henry, the Boston Bruins goaltender. Yeah. Sugar and, Jim. And he looks surprised. <laughs> Kel surprise. Like... <laughs> He's like, what is happening? I'm in the net? I'm a goaltender? How did I get here? They're bears. Yeah. Oh, bringing it back to the Soviet Union. Oh, yeah. the bears. <laughs> the bears. After the goal, showing tremendous respect and sportsmanship, a photograph was taken of Henry shaking hands with the bandage Richard. It is still considered one of the most famous images ever to be captured in sports. Mm. So it's probably hockey's most famous, except uh, for the... I was going to say the Bobby Orr. The Bobby Orr one. The Bobby Orr. That is um, a moment. But... But what happened on March 13th, 1955 did not end so wistfully. So it doesn't really end with much of a handshake. Oh, wait. So that's the day. So this is the day. The day that he's got the bandage. He gets that goal. They shake hands. So Montreal wins. That is that takes place about three years before the riots. So that's kind of like an example of Richard having a lot of run ins against the Bruins. Like he has a lot of famous career moments within the the rivalry that the housed rivalry of Boston and Montreal. And normally it ends in a handshake. It it's bad on the ice, but then it's done. Yeah. And the sportsman way, you know? Yeah. And and maybe they will be jawing and whatever, but it's nothing serious. But what happens in this game is one of the worst incidents of hockey related violence ever. (laughs) So pray tell grace. Set the scene. We're in Boston. Okay. It's 1955. I'm in Boston. I've lost my khakis. My is khakis. it my pants or is it my keys? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're. Real How do you south- like them apples? We're real southeast today. <laughs> I'm from Southie. <laughs> so I gotta go see about a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we're in Boston, and Richard is part of a confrontation as per usual, between the Canadians and the This Bruins. isn't shocking. I'm not shocked yet. I, no. Okay. It's a real bench clear. So the Bruins' Hal LeCoy, who previously played for the Canadians, high-sticked Richard at the end of a power play. Oh, that's dirty. Yeah, it's just, you know. That's and Richard's dirty. used. Richard gets that all the time. Your like, old teammate, end of a power play, dirty. Come on. Richard acquired five required five stitches to close the gash in his forehead. Oh, so it's a big high okay. stick. Okay. <laughs> also, no helmets. So right. just any Damn. high stick is basically you're going to the back to get stitched up. Yeah. <laughs> Referee Frank Udvari 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 signaled a delayed penalty, but allowed the play to continue because the Canadians had possession of the puck. 
When the play okay. ended, Richard skated up to Lecoy, who dropped his stick and gloves. Rather than fight, Richard hit him in the face and shoulders with his stick. So he's just beating the man with his stick rather than, like, squaring up. He's like, you saw what you did to me? <laughs> I do to you. That's my French. Want- that's my beat up Richard French <laughs> impression. <laughs> It's like, you want to high stick me? <laughs> I'll just stick everything. <laughs> everything. I'll low stick you, middle stick, stick you. <laughs> what levels? You pick. Yeah. <laughs> you choose. So the linesmen attempted to restrain Richard, who repeatedly broke away from them to continue <laughs> to attack. He's a big boy. <laughs> Which I love. They like wrangle him in, and he's like, okay, okay. And, and then just like, like, <laughs> like ah. And this poor guy, other guy's just like laying on the ice, lifeless, <laughs> dead. He's like, make it stop, <laughs> mommy. Um, mm. He eventually broke his stick over his opponent's body. <laughs> Body, just, just body. Boom. <laughs> and then linesman Cliff Thompson corralled Richard. Okay. Richard broke loose again. Is this guy fighting back? But this time he hunts down Thompson, who's the linesman. Oh no. And starts punching him in the head. Okay. And knocked him out. Can we just can we just discuss for a moment? Okay. Uh, <laughs> the rocket has been dazed many times over the course of his career to yeah. this point. <laughs> Like, I think this is a scenario like, um, what's it called? CTE. Yeah, CTE. Like, Potentially. how's his head looking? Probably not. Probably like probably Swiss cheese. Probably not good. <laughs> it's probably not probably good. Probably not all there. Well, and then they took away his column, so he really couldn't exercise his brain <laughs> in any other way. You know, they tell people with, like, dementia that they should do yeah. crosswords and stuff. Yeah. That was his crosswords. Yeah, and, and now it's and gone. And now that he doesn't have his, his column, he's... Just beating the shit out of refs. Jeez Louise, not good. And yeah, and this is a very like ah moment. Yeah. Like up until that point, it's like, whoa, this is crazy. And then he knocks out a ref and people are like, ah, <laughs> this is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, let's go home, kids. Yeah. Nothing to see here. So at this point, the Canadians trainers have to come out and just escort him off the ice. According to Montreal Herald writer Vince Lunny, Richard's face Lucille's was... Lucille's just chain smoking. <laughs> Lucille's left the game. She's listening to the radio she, Yeah, calls. she's listening to the radio, chain smoking, drinking a martini. <laughs> yeah, she put bets on the fight. She locks the door. I imagine <laughs> she's she, like, he's not coming home tonight. <laughs> he's not coming home tonight. Well, apparently his face looked like a smashed tomato, according to... The, the Richard's? Or? Richard's face. Oh, so yeah. he also got... He was definitely getting beat up. Okay. Uh, but cool. he was the only one using a weapon. <laughs> Richard That's was given... Assault. Yeah, so he's given a match penalty, and then he was ejected from the game, and he's fined $100. Okay. And Lacoy was given a five-minute major penalty, and then a 10-minute misconduct for the high stick. Okay. So, so that's the ruling after all of that. Which, again, you can do anything in hockey. Oh, my God, I know. <laughs> Following the game, and I think this is partly what it's kind of remembered for is Boston police arrive at the the Boston game attempting to arrest Richard. They're pumped. You can just <laughs> picture the police listening to the game on the radio. They're like, boys, this is it. Let's go. Fuck Boston cops. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, let's go. <laughs> so they're like waltzing up to the dressing room and they're like, hi, we're here to arrest Maurice Richard. Yeah. And the players bar the door with like chairs so the police can't get in. Oh, no. Um, Bruins- That's resisting arrest if I ever saw it. That's like assisted resistance of arrest. But it's also in a game. Yeah. I think something like this happened in another instance, too. I think it was in Boston. But I think Boston police officers. It was a Philly-Boston game or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. I was pretty sure that they they tried to arrest a Philadelphia Flyers player for doing something probably like this. Have you ever, the SNL, what's the SNL like? The news that they do on SNL. What's that called? The Weekend Update? The Weekend Update on SNL. um, A host who's been I, he's still the host of the weekend update he's african-american mm-hmm. uh, michael che hates boston and not in a joking funny way like he's like it's just the most racist like state it is uh, <laughs> or most racist city like he's he's like boston is just and he's like not just once not just twice but like multiple times he's like just mm-hmm. called out boston for being like incredibly racist and mm-hmm. just predominantly white and i mean it's like once you do it like once, it's like, oh, you should apologize. But now he's just like kind of known for it. Like he just he will sound <laughs> off about it because he's just like 
do you see black people in Boston? Like, no. nope, didn't think so. Well, we talked about it in the Jackie Robinson episode. Where yeah, they, exactly. They, they tried him out as a joke. And uh, oh, right, exactly. And that the last integrated yeah. team in MLB. Yeah, so it's definitely, there's some, there's some issues, some deep-rooted issues in Boston. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boston, you know, it's, it's just like, the Irish aren't great. <laughs> all the time <laughs> it's basically the history of it's actually really interesting but it's essentially irish people selling out other lower class people to become white so yeah. it's irish people who were long for a long time stigmatized for being irish basically being like there's someone worse than us here yeah it's black people yeah so we should retaliate against black people and then we can become white middle class. Yeah. So it's just class wars. It's Ugh. all messed up. It's all the rich. Ugh. Eat the rich. <laughs> Fuck capitalism. <laughs> the world's gonna end. Grace just pulled out her uh, soapbox and uh, she's now. Oh. <coughs> I told you it was the end of the world. Yeah, it's the end of the world's been ending for a long time, in the wise words of Mitch McNutt. Yeah. Um, okay, so the police come. They're trying to arrest him, which the- is just bullshit like Which is that's stupid. dumb um Bruton's management finally persuade the officers to leave with the promise that the nhl is gonna sort everything out they pay him a couple <laughs> what not lincoln's that's just no lincoln's <laughs> yeah i was like some george washington's just like three dollars <laughs> they start stripping <laughs> <sighs> oh you're those kind of police officers <laughs> oh we thought this was a party <laughs> Where's the birthday girl? <laughs> <laughs> the rocket comes out, I'll beat up. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. Wrong address. <laughs> so Richard never gets arrested for this. Good. Uh, he was instead sent to the hospital by Good. team doctors after complaining of headaches and strong stomach pains. Oh, sounds like a concussion sounds to like me. Sounds like a concussion to me. <laughs> That, that's the new our new Minute Women uh, diagnosis is. Yeah. He sounds concussed. <laughs> sounds like a concussion to us. <laughs> This was the second time Richard had an altercation with an official. As I mentioned earlier, right. he had slapped the linesman earlier that season and <laughs> yeah. was fined uh, $250. Yeah. So league president, President uh, Clarence Campbell, upon hearing about the incident, ordered all parties to meet in his office in Montreal. Okay. So when he hears about this, tells everybody to come to Montreal, they're going to talk about it. The game's on-ice officials... Richard Lacoy, Montreal's assistant general manager, Ken Reardon, the Boston general manager, Lynn Patrick, Montreal coach Dick Irvin, and NHL referee-in-chief Carl Voss attended the March 16th hearing. So we're having a hearing oh in the president's boy. office. Oh, <laughs> boy. In Montreal. In Montreal. A little bit of home court advantage. It is. That is just where the NHL head office is, though. Yeah. So who's to say? But at least he's not getting, like tomatoes thrown at him while he's walking in it's true yeah <laughs> in his defense because he might have retaliated more <laughs> this is richard's defense okay i'm ready for why he knocked out a referee did he come up with this defense like does he say this i don't think he has representation okay so i think it is just what and i think he's probably being honest i'm ready he said that he was dazed concussed yeah and thought thompson was just a boston player so he's like Oh, I wouldn't have knocked out a ref. Yeah. I just knocked out a Boston Bruin. You know what? <laughs> Another human being. You know, but you know what? That honestly does, in the in the sense of hockey, that does make it a little bit better. The heat of the moment. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's just so... They're both narrow on a scenario, <laughs> Narrow a scenario where that makes it better. Yeah. It's just like, so I didn't narrow. murder... I didn't mean to murder him. I meant to murder a different guy. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. You're free to go. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Here's your hockey stick back. <laughs> yeah. He didn't deny punching or attacking Lacoy. Oh, well, no. I hope I'm saying his name right as well. Laco, Laco potentially. McCoy? Apologies to yeah. uh, Mr. Lacoy just a general blanket, yeah, statement of apologies. Just sorry, yeah, for everything for this yeah. whole podcast. What were yeah. we thinking? <laughs> what were we thinking? If you knew what we were thinking, comment down below. Uh, <laughs> every episode is a sorry segment. <laughs> <laughs> That's been the the dark truth this whole time. <laughs> every episode is a sorry segment. <laughs> Following the hearing, Campbell released a twelve hundred word statement to the press. So he gets a column. <laughs> Fucking President Campbell. 
<sighs> Anyways, in his statement, he found the attack on Leco to be deliberate and that he did not believe Richard's statement that he did not mean to attack the ref. Okay. So he's like, I don't believe Richard. Rather, his attack on the ref was in direct retribution for interfering with the fight. Given Richard's history of attacking refs, <laughs> which he does have a record, and for the extreme violence he demonstrated, uh-huh. Campbell concluded that he was a danger to other players, and as punishment, Richard would be suspended from all games, uh, both league and playoff, for the remainder of the 54-55 season. Okay. So that's going to be his last game for the whole year. Okay. Which is pretty unprecedented. So that, that's never happened before in the league, I believe. Okay, so that's never happened. Now, just just a, a question: How close are we to like his retirement? Like, where are we in his career? So, at this point, he has won two cups. He's okay. definitely an older player in the league, right? And obviously, he didn't know this at the time, but he's going to go on play five more seasons. They're going to win the cup every right. year. I mean, he didn't and then know, he'll retire. He didn't know it at this time, but this is like. Not mid career, but this isn't the this isn't like his I'd last season or early. We're on the come down, right? But still okay. mid career, right? Okay, late cool. mid career, cool. The suspension, the longest that Campbell would ever issue in his thirty one year tenure as league president, was considered by many in Montreal to be unjust and unduly severe. Within minutes of the judgment's uh, dispension, I think it's pretty fair. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, the NHL head office then in Montreal was bombarded by hundreds of calls from enraged fans, many of whom made death threats to Campbell. <sighs> so it's just a bunch of fucking Montrealers yeah. calling the head office. <laughs> Critical la sacre bleu. Sacre bleu, sacre bleu. <laughs> it's just them getting, like, all riled up about him getting this suspension yeah. and then immediately resorting to the violence that he was suspended for. (laughs) It's like, oh, you want to see violence? Yeah. Death threats. (laughs) (laughs) However, the general feeling around the league was that the punishment could have been more severe. So for everyone outside Montreal, they're like, thank God, someone's suspending someone for almost murdering a person on ice. Yeah. Detroit Red Wings general manager Jack Adams said that Campbell, quote, could do no less and thought he would be suspended until January 1st of next season. Mm-hmm. So for a calendar year right. rather than the remainder Now, he's of the a cool dude. Jack Adams. Yeah. Um, we've talked about him a little bit, just talking about Gordy Howe. Um, and he's a, he's a good guy. He's a good person. He's just a good person, just wholesome. wholesome. And just like thoughtful and considerate and just like the guy you'd want as your friend like <laughs> so if that's what jack is saying i think that that i think that it's that's understandable good. like jack's not like oh he should be kicked out of the league forever like no like go away rocket he's just like yeah he did a bad thing we should have we should punish him like this is fine punishment but like i thought it, it could have been, been worse. worse yeah yeah the Red Wings forward, Ted Lindsay, whom the league had disciplined earlier in the same season for an incident in Toronto in which he attacked a Maple Leafs fan yeah. who had been threatening teammate Gordie Howe, expressed yeah. the stronger opinion that Richard was lucky to not get a life suspension. Yeah. Quote, in baseball, football, or almost anything else, that much would be almost automatic. Yeah. I say they should have suspended him for I life. Says, I say I they should have suspended him for life. <laughs> Cockney <laughs> teeth, mate. <laughs> Ted Lindsay. <laughs> Ted Lindsay. Do I have to Photoshop him as British now? <laughs> as the queen. <laughs> as the queen. <laughs> On the back of coins. <laughs> Well, if you're Mike Bossy, uh, photo editing, Photoshop skills, Thank anything you. to go by, uh, this will be a wonderful installment <laughs> in the Minute Women social media. Those are epic. Like, they're so funny. They're so bad, but they're funny. They're, like, uh, so stupid. No, the <laughs> Treaty of Versailles one is incredible. That one took a long time because oh, I had to put so it good. behind stuff and in front of other things. It's very complicated. You are... Amazing. <laughs> I think that from, well, time traveler Mike Bossy will have to appear in a lot of our photos, but I want him yep. to, I want it to be subtle. I don't want us to say that Mike Bossy no. in the picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then if people, the first person to like, maybe we should do a contest someday. Like yeah. the first person to notice that Mike Bossy's in the photo. Yeah. Gets us. I love that. 
gets our eternal gratitude for now. But for now. Eventually, if we ever have something to give. Yeah, you'll get a hat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you'll get a hat. You get a hat. You get a hat. It's not a Minute Women hat. It's just a hat. It's just, <laughs> it's just one of my hats. A big top hat <laughs> that will be cumbersome and annoying to mail. <laughs> In a Laura Something that like would wear. <laughs> As a British person. <laughs> Bruins president, Walter A. Brown, agreed with Adams, saying, quote, that's the least they could do. Bruins player, Fleming McHale. Notice that it's a lot of Detroit Red Wings and Bruins yeah. players and management saying all these things. But anyways, um, Bruins player, Fleming McHale, said, quote, if they had thrown the book at Richard in 1947 when he cut Bill as Zinke, which we talked in the last yeah. episode about, um, and Vic Lynn, it might have stopped him and made him an even greater hockey player because of it. Which, that's okay, a shut bold the fuck statement. Up. <laughs> yeah. Just, like, that's like, preachy. <laughs> I'm just like up here on my high horse <laughs> looking down upon all of you. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You might even be a better hockey player <laughs> if you would just listen to us. <laughs> I hate that. Anyways. Interest was high in the hockey world. The Detroit Free Press reported its switchboard was swamped with calls. People yeah. are calling in. And the girls they just with their, with their headphones on, they're just flicking those light things. They're and just flicking like <laughs> switchboards. They're unplugging cords yeah. and then plugging them back <laughs> into are. different holes. They are. <laughs> Someone teach me how a switchboard works. <laughs> Maybe that'll be your sister's next phone foray is oh into switchboards. God. She loves the ro- rotary. No. Which we previously talked about. Yes. The rotary phone, still so stressful. <laughs> so, stressful. so stressful for me. Next, it'll be switchboards. Yeah. <laughs> Plugging things in, and you're trying to call people, and you're like, God, <laughs> no one's connecting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. So basically, anyone who didn't live in Montreal during this time was super stoked that Richard is out for the rest of the season. It seems like people who didn't live in Canada. Yeah. I mean, I got to imagine that people in Ontario are probably... I mean, Toronto, at least, are yeah. probably just as excited. But Yeah, that's true. Basically, if you're not a Montreal fan. Yeah. And you're the people that get you're brutalized stoked. by Richard all the <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. You're probably pretty excited that he's not going to be around for the rest yeah. of the year. Many Quebecois regarded the suspension as the English majority further admit attempting to subjugate the French minority and an attempt to humiliate French Canadians by excessively punishing their favorite player. Which, I don't think that's true. That's a bit of a spin. I don't. I can't say that I know enough about the situation to know if he, if an English player would have been suspended just as harshly. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm not But saying, also, he's a ticket drawer. Yeah. Why would they want him out of the league? Exactly. He makes them money. <clears throat> and Exactly. And I'm not saying the president of the NHL, like, felt good about doing this but i'm not i i don't think that he felt like oh yeah i'm doing this to super like punish stoked. french people like yeah i don't know if anyone's thinking about it that hard no <laughs> which i will say i don't think campbell handles the the fallout particularly well oh, no okay. no so <laughs> campbell who received death threats stated that he would not back down and announced his attention intentions to attend the next canadians home game which okay. was against the red wings oh on oh, march 17th god so it's on St. Patrick's Day. Okay. He's going to go to the next Canadians game. Which is a Wait, big Catholic who, holiday. Who would you say it's against? Uh, the Red Wings. Okay. So it's not against the Bruins, but it's also another one of the... I'd say those yeah. are probably the top flight teams during yeah. this time. Yeah. And Gordy Howe's playing now. Yes. Yeah. We're in this the, the Gordie early Howe 50s. Gordy Howe so. Yeah. So he, despite the advice that he shouldn't be doing that. So everyone's like, hey, <laughs> don't go to the game. And That's he's like, so I'm going to go to the game. I'm going to go and I'm going to make it known. I'm going to wear I'll go wear a hat that says, hey, I'm the president of the NHL. <laughs> they they should have called him the Comet. I'm this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just not over it. This Just is all this it. is all because the Comet didn't stick. Didn't, yeah, it didn't land. <laughs> So what he found when he comes to the game is hundreds of fans demonstrating outside the Montreal Forum lobby two hours before the game started. Woof. <laughs> demonstrating. <laughs> Attempts to crash with the pitchforks. gates. <laughs> and, and with his and name fire. on them. <laughs> and lynching. <laughs> like, oh, God. It's a protest. Anyways. 
Attempts to crash the gates by fans without tickets were denied by the police. Okay. <laughs> they're like, I'm sorry. I like that they're denied. Like, they're asking the police to, they're like, can we crash the gates, please? They're like, no. And they're like, no. okay. <laughs> So when they're denied by the police, uh, the crowd moved to Cabot Square, and there it grew to 6,000 people. And that's when they start looking for cars. Some guy's like, dude, you gotta find a car. It's not a riot unless we have a car. Yeah, it's like, I saw one just down the street. That'd be a great one. Yeah. There's a pickup truck. It's very top heavy. Yeah. I think that we can really get some momentum with that one. (laughs) Some carried signs that denounced Campbell. Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Others had signs reading, among other things, Vive Richard, no Richard, no cup, our national sport destroyed. (laughs) Ooh. Some members of the crowd began smashing windows and throwing ice chunks at passing streetcars. Because winter. That's the other thing. (laughs) They have all these projectiles because it's winter. That's just so Canadian. (laughs) That is so Canadian. Let's have a big snowball fight. (laughs) And it's also St. Patrick's Day. Like, I don't know when St. Patrick's Day becomes a big drinking holiday. It's rowdy. I think it's always been a big drinking holiday. I know it's I know it's not as big in Ireland as it is here, apparently. Really? Yeah. Apparently it it has over time kind of grown in that association. Yeah. But it's much it's much more of was like a religious Catholic holiday. I thought it was more of like like in Ireland and stuff, I think it's more like a, a nice holiday, like Christmas. Yeah. Like it's about spending time with family. It's not trashy. It's not trashy like it is here. <laughs> yeah. Like wear your skimpy green clothes and go out in the Canadian winter and yeah, start drinking freeze. at eleven a.m. Yeah, it's, if I don't not think earlier. It's like that. But it is a national holiday in yes, um, Ireland. Yeah, is it their version of Canada Day? It might be. Maybe. Yeah, like a patriotic day. Something. Something. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, back to 1955, St. Patrick's Day in Montreal. The game against Detroit was a battle for first place in the league. So it's an important game, too. Oh, it's a big game. But after the suspension, uh, this goal was far from the mind of the Canadians. Right. So the whole team's distracted by all of this. And is the pocket rocket playing now? Not yet. Okay. So he's not there yet. But Jacques Plante is. Uh, oh. Goaltender Jacques Plante later recalled, and this is his rookie season. Yeah. Um. He later recalled that the game seemed secondary and the players and officials were, quote, casting worried glances at the sullen crowd. So everyone is just anxious about being there. Everyone's just like, oh, shoot. Likewise, Dick Irvin said later, quote, the people didn't care if we got licked 100 to 1 that night. No one in the crowd is there to watch hockey. (laughs) Midway through the first period, with Montreal already down 2 nothing, Campbell arrived with three secretaries from his office. One he would later go on to marry. (laughs) I (laughs) don't know why that's included. That's a good tidbit. (laughs) Three secretaries. (laughs) He was just picking and choosing. But it's like... Don't you come with bodyguards? Yeah. <laughs> not like nope. three office and, you know, workers. And like, I'm not like today, like a secretary could be a man, but then guaranteed these are three like 20 something women. Yeah. Who I'm like, I'm assuming one of them is not like Miss Trunchbull from Matilda. Like I'm assuming <laughs> these are three like pretty ladies. He's taking them all out on dates. And yeah. So he had to take all of them to this game. Yeah. This but they is don't a know it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. I he hope seems so. Like, I kind of I looked up a little bit about uh, Clarence Campbell. He seems like a kind of decent man. Oh, that's good. <laughs> he did a lot for the league, apparently. That's good. Let's go for him. But he did marry a secretary. All right. Um, so did my stepdad. Thank God. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> See, it works out. Secretaries are people too. <laughs> the fifteen thousand spectators immediately started booing Campbell. Yep, I. I expected that. That's expected. Okay. Some fans began pelting him and his group with eggs, vegetables, and various debris for six straight minutes. That's so many eggs. (laughs) How much did you bring? Tomatoes. Six consistent minutes. Croissants. Of being hit with things. Croissants. Yeah. (laughs) Baguettes. Woof. (laughs) Crack over the head. Despite police and ushers' attempts to keep fans away from Campbell, one fan, pretending to be a friend of Campbell's, managed to elude security. <laughs> What's that? Is that? It's like, no, I'm a friend. No, no, no. This he's my friend. Association. He's my friend. They're like, oh, you're his friend? Okay. <laughs> okay, you go through it's now. Like, Hi, I'd like to get in. I have words with the president. They're like, no. And he's like, oh, okay. Turns around <laughs> casually, leaves the court, comes back. Uh, Hi, I'm the president's friend. Oh, yes, you may enter. <laughs> 
As he approached, the fan extended his hands as if to shake Campbell's. When Campbell reached out to shake his hands, the fan slapped him across the face. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Classy. Nice. As Campbell... Oh, oh. <laughs> Up high. Down low. Yeah. <laughs> Too slow. <laughs> As Campbell reeled from the attack, the fan <gasps> reached back and delivered a punch. He reeled from the attack? Reeled from the attack. <laughs> He's flying the across girls the are, room. The girls are like, oh no! He gets! <laughs> The police dragged the attacker away while he attempted to kick the NHL president. So he's really slaps, punches, kicks. <laughs> those he are those is are truly the, a karate master. I was gonna say those are on the <laughs> list of classroom don'ts in elementary school. <laughs> no, yeah, no slapping, no kicking, no, no punching. punching. <laughs> Shortly after the fan attack, a tear gas bomb was set off inside the forum. Are you joking? Not me? far from Campbell's seat. How nope. did this not come up in the Jacques Plan episode? <laughs> I'm sure he's just like, he's just like, I blacked out. Yeah, Jock's <laughs> a baby. A stressful event, I don't remember. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Montreal Fire Chief Armand Pair um, mandated that the game had to be suspended for the protection of the fans, and the forum was evacuated. Because now there's tear gas everywhere. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> and no one had masks. So. Well, and I'm assuming you're not 100% sure it's tear gas, like immediately. Oh, like, yeah. You'd be like, what is this? Yeah, like, and also, if the tear gas is going off in the first period yeah what's gonna go on this in the is third still the period. first period yeah. oh, Lord. okay okay following the evacuation campbell took refuge in the forum clinic where he met with canadians general manager frank selke uh the two wrote a note to adams declaring the red wings the winner of the game due to the forum's uh ordered closure okay so they just took the, the score at the end of the third period and the red wings won cool the end of the first period yeah first period <laughs> yeah. sorry yeah Evacuating the forum did nothing to stop the discontent. The departing crowd joined the demonstrators, and a riot began in the streets. Yeah, rioters were chanting "Abaz Campbell" or "Down with Campbell" and "Vive Richard," while they smashed windows, attacked bystanders, ignited newsstands, and overturned cars. <laughs> yeah, there it is. <laughs> I've been waiting. More than 50 stores within a 15-block radius of the forum were looted and vandalized. 12 police officers and 25 civilians were injured. The rioters continued well into the night, with things eventually calming down around 3 a.m. Okay. That's a lot of momentum for a riot. It's a lot of momentum. (laughs) Rue St. Catherine was in shambles. Uh, The police arrested between 41 and 100 people, which I love that stat. (laughs) But not between 40 and 100. Between 41 and 100 people. <laughs> we definitely counted up to 41. And, and then it was might more. Have triple digits, but we're not sure. And then it was just more. Yeah, that's just more. They might have still said like 41 to like 250. Like we don't know. We're not certain. Yeah, we were, someone was counting. Literally, that's what it is. One of the police officers were counting. The rest weren't. And yeah. he got 41. And then they're like, what's math? 41. Yeah. You got me. I don't know. Carry the two. And we definitely know it's more than 41. 100. <laughs> Damage was estimated to be $100,000, which in uh, today's money would be about $1 million yeah. uh, to the neighborhood and the forum itself. One jewelry store alone had losses of uh, what in today would be over $66,000. Oh, gracious. But of course, that's the first place you go. Yeah. You're just like taking advantage of a riot. Yeah. <laughs> Looters. Not to say that their uh, message was particularly, you know grandiose <laughs> i don't think you're really taking advantage of a, yeah. of a cause when yeah. you go and rob a jewelry store when people are destroying a city because their favorite hockey player got suspended for the rest right. of the year but <laughs> so the incident was national news in canada naturally naturally <laughs> uh, of course it would be reporters lined up to see both campbell and richard on march 18th so the next day richard was reluctant to make a statement fearing it would start another riot, but he eventually gave the following statement in both French and English over television to a national audience. Quote, Because I always try so hard to win and had my troubles in Boston, I was suspended. At playoff time, it hurts not to be in the game with the boys. However, I want to do what is good for the people of Montreal and the team. So that no further harm will be done, I would like to ask everyone to get behind the team and help the boys win from the New York Rangers and Detroit. I will take my punishment and come back next year to help the club and the younger players win the cup. 
Campbell was unapologetic. <laughs> Campbell's like, uh, this wasn't my fault. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's not. But also, you could have listened to the advice and just not gone to the game. Exactly. But you know what? That's a really good statement. I think it is, too. That It's like, it's not about me. This no. is about the city. And it's a, Don't be doing <sighs> stupid shit. It's apologetic without saying that what you did was wrong. Yeah. He's like, I'm sorry that this situation is occurring and I feel bad for the other players on the team. Mm -hmm. So rally around them and support them as I will be doing. Yeah. And and we'll come back next year stronger and better. Yeah. And I'll be there. Do as I say, (laughs) not as I do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is a good message, especially because at this point they've got a couple kids. You know, you don't want to be a monster. And it's also a time when you live in the city that you play for. He yeah. lives in Montreal. He lives I'm in sure Montreal. he doesn't want to see it in flames. No. Especially over something that... Exactly. It, that that response feels That's too like, big for. Was it Vancouver or Edmonton? Where were the other big hockey riots? Vancouver. Vancouver. Also due to Boston. Also loss. due to a Boston <laughs> loss. And, and that's the thing. That's the thing about riots is that you have to remember that you're destroying your city. Yeah, it's your city. It's your neighbor's property. Yeah, it's like your community jewelry store. Like it's yeah. your, you know, mom and pop grocery store that you're that you're damaging, that you're causing like pain and struggle for them. So like, don't do that. Yeah, let's let's not riot because of sports. Yeah, in general. Yeah. So Campbell's unapologetic. He considered it his duty to attend the game. As president, it was his duty to attend the game. No, you're (laughs) wrong. Montreal Mayor Jean Drapeau was livid at Campbell for attending the game, and he laid the blame for the riot on Campbell. Yeah. Uh, Montreal City Councilor wanted Campbell arrested for inciting the riot. Yeah. (laughs) I can see the thought process behind that, though, because if he had not gone, maybe things wouldn't have escalated to that point. Yeah, like I can, it, it might have just been a hockey game. It might have just been about the hockey and the rivalry there. And, you know, you boo and you you yell and you like whine at the refs. But yeah. then you go home. But this guy showed up and just caused caused it to escalate. Yeah, I think it's it was definitely an escalation. I'm sure it would have been. A tense hockey game. Yeah. And I'm sure something might have happened. But yeah. the, maybe the tear gas. And then maybe it would have stopped at that. The riot starts when the fans are forced to evacuate the forum. Yeah. And they meet with the people that are already organizing outside. Right. So that's when you have the spark yeah. that causes the riot to really happen. Yes. You probably would have had a lot of angry people. Yeah. But if Campbell doesn't go to the game, you know, the tear gas might not get set off. And right. you might not have that happen. Right. Um, does he deserve to be arrested for that? I don't think so. He didn't do anything illegal, but yeah. I can definitely see people being putting blame on him He's just for dumb. why it happened. Yeah. He's just dumb. Um, especially when all you have to do is be like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry that I didn't look, take the advice of my yeah. advisors. Should have. I, I will next time. Yeah. Have a great day. <laughs> I will take the rioting <laughs> people of Montreal more seriously yeah. next time. Years later, Canadians player Jean Beliveau stated that although he disagreed with Campbell's decision to attend the game, as well as feeling Campbell might have been using his appearance to make a statement, he concluded that yeah. Campbell <laughs> he concluded that Campbell may have felt that if he did not attend the game, he could appear like he was hiding. He also noted that Campbell's absence might not have made that much of a difference, anyways. Okay. You know, an even statement Jean from Beliveau. Jean Beliveau. <laughs> he deserves a heritage minute. He's yeah. a great guy. It could have been worse. It could have been better. <laughs> it happened. Who's to say? It is over. <laughs> Let's play hockey. C'est la vie. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play hockey. I love the Catholic Church and my mother. Yeah. And you know <laughs> the rest if you listen to our previous episode. Yeah. Richard did come back. He did lead them to not one, not, not two, two, but five, five consecutive cups when he returned. So in history, like the history books, the Richard riots have grown in Quebec mythology. <laughs> uh, Quebec mythology. Yeah. I love that. Quebec folklore. Yeah. And for them, it's a nation building moment because you have a lot of separatists who think that Quebec should be its own 
country. Still. Yeah. Uh, the sight of French Quebecers rioting over the previous slight to a Quebec cultural icon like Richard led many commentators to believe it was a significant factor in Quebec's quiet revolution in the 1960s. Huh. So the quiet revolution is a cultural revolution that seeks out Quebec, like... Uh, Kind of innovations to Quebec culture right. and identity, which previously was very much, it's about tradition, it's about preserving French language, it's about, it's about preserving Catholicism mm -hmm. versus innovating and growing a new culture. Right. And that's kind of what the, the quiet revolution is about. Huh. Um, it's also 1960s, like Summer of Love, all that stuff. A lot <laughs> of marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little. Who's Maybe to, a little. Who's to say? You know, people went to Woodstock. <laughs> like Mike like Bossy. Mike Bossy. <laughs> people who attended Woodstock like Mike Bossy. Uh, <laughs> we are now rewriting history. <laughs> we are no longer just, just talking about history. We are rewriting we're, it. We're, we're purposefully telling lies yeah. about the past. <laughs> we, so, this is how a cult starts. <laughs> Our follow-up podcast will be the Mike Bossy podcast. Yeah. <laughs> How Mike Bossy changed the world. <laughs> Mike Bossy died on the cross for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so great, too, because his face is so big and dumb. I know. Like, Mike Bossy was a great hockey player, and it seems like he was a pretty nice guy yeah. in general. But his face is just so, like, it's, And it's derpy. so, like, it, it's just the hair and the face and the, yeah. oop. There's a Aww. great photo that I wanted to use, but I'm not good enough at Photoshop to do colored Photoshop yet. I need to do black and white. That's fair. <laughs> but the um, it's him holding the puck from when he won 50, when he had 50 goals in 50 games, yeah. which is why he gets mentioned in our previous episode. <laughs> which is why we're talking about it. <sighs> oh my gosh. But anyways, he's like holding the puck. His smile in that photo <laughs> is so cheesy and dorky. He's like, durr. <laughs> And that's probably his real smile. Probably, yeah. <laughs> that's why he was such a great hockey player is because he has lived and existed for so long that he's just become an expert in everything. Exactly. And he decided to go through that era of humanity as a hockey player. Mike Bossy. Mike Bossy, time, time traveler. traveler. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. It's going to be my first book. <laughs> it's a children's the book. The Adventures of Mike Bossy, <laughs> Time Traveler. Time traveler. Uh, okay. <laughs> Back to the Quebec riot. Yeah. Uh, so the cause of the riot has been suggested not to be as the result of the severity of the punishment, but what really mattered was that an Anglophone president of an Anglophone league had suspended a Quebec player. Right. So they're saying that, well, yes, it's about the suspension. There's this undercurrent that's actually the reason it happens. Okay. French Canadians saw themselves as inherently disadvantaged in Canada and North America as a whole. It was Quebec lashing out against the English establishment. That said, many modern historians have tried to dispel this. So Benoit Melanson, for example, argues that the riot has become part of the, uh, the Rocket Richard myth and has taken on importance that in retrospect is far greater than it actually had been when it happened. Huh. So... It's almost like if we took the Vancouver riots right. and then said that it's actually in response to the economic collapse that had taken place in like the the, the stock market crash of 2008 and the, yeah. the, the class tension that's taking place all the time. Right. And it's an American team coming in and beating yeah. a Canadian team. Very hindsight is 2020 rewriting it with those rose colored glasses. Yeah. Deal. Like you're putting too much significance on this event. The people that were actually partaking were probably just looking to flip cars. Right. Because <laughs> they're <laughs> mad that their favorite player is not in the league. Yeah. Which is also an emotion. <laughs> which is a valid feeling. Yeah. That's, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. He concludes by suggesting that the riot is now something that it wasn't. Uh, so Melanson states, quote, the riot has become the key event in turning Richard from a mere hockey player to a symbol of political resistance, even if Richard himself publicly was apolitical. And according to this book, definitely not an independent Quebecer. So someone who wants um, sovereignty for Quebec. Oh, OK. Richard was not one of those people. According to this popular narrative, for the first time, the people of Quebec stood up for themselves, especially 
English Canada delights in the anachronistically announcing that this was the beginning of the 1960s quiet revolution. Interesting. Perhaps the best way to explain the interpretation of the riot change is by looking at the change in public perceptions of its antagonist. Uh, Quote, it was necessary to overlook some of Richard's character traits to rewrite several episodes of his career, end quote, in order to evaluate him into this mythical figure. So in a lot of the modern histories, they won't tell you that Richard is a very violent person. And he did have a record going up to this point. Right. That warrants him being suspended. It's also near the end of the season. So, yes, it's a full season Tensions suspension. Are high. But it's not like first game of the season, he's getting right. suspended for the whole um, season. He just got off early. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he just went on summer vacation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the story of the Richard Riots. Huh. It's a weird little blip. I'm really glad in sports history. I'm really glad you did this as a two parter. <laughs> I'm really glad really that we got to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's a it's a cool uh, event that you could yeah you could spend a whole hour talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if we had done it in the I full, I, one, sorry, <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> she I, kicked me under the table. I thought I saw someone, but it was Mark's reflection. It was scary. <laughs> it's scary regardless. I know. <laughs> Well, all I can say is that I am excited for some new Mike Bossy time <laughs> traveling <laughs> memes. Um, I love that. <laughs> I think it's so fun. No, but this was a great episode. So thank you for making it a two-parter and for letting me delight in car flipping riots uh, <laughs> in Montreal. No problem. And uh, and learning a little bit more. Yeah. Thanks for coming into town. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we both get to be in Halifax yeah, to do this one. <laughs> exactly. So if you're not following us on our social media channels, I don't know what you're doing. There is now tra- time traveling, Mike Bossy, <laughs> fun stuff to be following along with now that we know Grace is a Photoshop whiz kid. <laughs> so please give us a follow. So on Instagram, we are at Minute Women Podcast and the same on Facebook. So give us a follow there. That's where our moms and dads like to follow. So you can see their super <laughs> cute comments. And then on Twitter, we are at The Minute Women. And make sure you're subscribed to the podcast on whatever platform you listen to us on. We release episodes every Wednesday, so make sure that you're subscribed. You get notifications yeah. for when we're new episodes finally drop. Make it a thing. Yeah. Minute Women Wednesday. Minute Women Celebrate Wednesdays. with us. Yeah. yeah, That can be your new mantra for 2021 is yeah. Minute Women Wednesdays. Yeah. And we also have a really great website that yeah. has all of our episodes. Uh, it has all of the sources that Grace uses. So if you want to go fact check her at all or just so Please just don't. Yeah, just get a little <laughs> bit more informed yourself. Uh, all of the sources are there, and that's updated with every episode. And make sure you review the podcast. Right now, that is the biggest support to us. If you can go on Apple Podcasts, give us a rating, give us a review. It makes the algorithm happy, and it means that we have more people to share these awesome stories with, and we can grow our little community. We're, com- we're coming up pretty close on one year, yeah. so... It's ah, it's crazy. It's pants. a little crazy. Yeah, yeah. We've it was got February. Big, big we, things planned. We premiered in February, so yeah, late late February. Yeah. So we're about two months off. We'll have we have to plan something crazy. I don't know what we're gonna do. Yet. A party, a socially distanced party. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.